You know, th this is, well, I'm not going to say it's a common issue, but it's a common issue that, that we're having an issue um, nationwide, all right? And I don't know where you live uh, with regards to a few areas. We don't have enough math teachers, all right? We don't have enough special educators, and we don't have enough aid support. Uh, meaning that that uh, because of how, especially with the aid support, how much they're paying aids, um, but people don't want, people people don't want to do it. I mean, our economy is too good, um, and so you know why. So we're just having shortages. At the same time, a lot of schools, because of the Affordable Care Act, are not employing full time aids like they used to, which means that they. You know, and then a lot of schools, because they don't want to give them union, union protection, end up, um, you know, pink slipping them every year uh, so that they can't achieve the standard to uh, be covered. Now, that's just in a few states that, that I'm familiar with. Some states, they may have some variations on, on how you get uh, full recognition with regards to the union. Uh, and then also it may be different... Um, in, in some of those states that expanded uh, their their um, uh, health care options uh, under the Affordable Care Act to where some of these schools, you know, may not be trying to skirt the work requirement or the number of hours uh, that because, that, you know, health care, as, as we all know, has exploded. Um, so I'm, I'm giving you some of the background as to what is feeding this inability but one of the other things is is that depends on it really does depend on on the aid when the aid uh called in if it was last minute then no they're they're you know their ability or trying to find somebody is almost near impossible um now is that is that a an excuse no of course it's not an excuse the, the reasonable solution to all of this is to have, I always recommend about three aides trained in the same exact way for your child. All three. Now, it doesn't mean that, that your child doesn't need the one-to-one. -one. Of course, they need the one-to-one. -one. But what needs to happen is that there needs to be a backup and a backup that whoever the other aides are working with, that, that adjustments can be made to where if, if your child's aid is gone, then these would be able to step into that role depending on how uh, they're utilized by the school. And some of these aides that are there are serving in the way of, are serving in the capacity of let's say classroom support aides, which means that they could easily um, share double duty with regards to your son uh, or, or double up with another aide uh, and this is where you go back to your IEP team and you create a safety net of what happens if the aid isn't there. And if and what happens if the aid isn't there and you can't find a sub, all right? And that's where you have, and you're going to have to do it. I mean, you're your child's main advocate and you're just going to have to sit there with your team and you're going to have to map out all of these contingencies. If the aid's not there and they're not able to find a sub, then then who um, out of the people that do exist could end up uh, fulfilling that position. And, and what you do is you have it all written down. It doesn't necessarily need to be in the IEP. It could be in meeting minutes. But then those meeting minutes turn into your child's education record. At that point, if this occurs again, there's something that would be, I'm not going to say enforceable. I mean, enforceable comes in with uh, in that particular situation, it becomes a dignity issue, and it comes becomes more of an ADA um, or or a a 504 civil rights type of issue. But those meeting notes and what's read, written in the meeting notes, if they're failing to comply with what you guys had agreed to, then it would be something that the Office of Civil Rights could handle, um, and that's right up their alley. Or the uh, uh, there there are attorneys with the Americans with Disabilities Act uh, that come in and assist with those kind of uh, issues as well. Uh, so it wouldn't necessarily be an IEP FAPE issue as much as it would be these other um, 
uh, uh, categories. But like I said, easy solution. Bring the team pack back together. And I know schools don't really do this, but parents need to start thinking five steps ahead. All right? Don't assume that the school is going to think five steps ahead. That's just not what they do. All right? Because this is just standard operating procedure. Is that when the teacher's out, if they can't find a sub, I mean, they, they, they wing it. And everything's about winging it. So if you don't want it winged, and you don't need it winged, you know, so how do you do that? You call a meeting, and then you put in writing in the meeting minutes how you tier this contingency plans. If this happens, these is this is who steps in. This is what needs to occur. And that's how you solve the problem. Okay?